start off with here's who I am and here's what I do for a living because I think that it doesn't matter it doesn't matter right now right my title how long I've been doing the job um, truly we need to connect on a personal level right now and so to prove my point I'm gonna start there and we'll get to what I actually do for a living and, and um, build some credibility that way in a minute but I'm gonna start with some other stuff so hopefully there's something in here you can relate to and I'm hoping for this connection if above anything else if, if we get some content here that that helps you wonderful but truly what matters to me right now is connection I don't do well with this social isolation business so I'd love to be able to connect with you in some way and at least make the most of this alone together thing okay um, so bear with me and I'm gonna dig deep I'm gonna get real with you and I want you to take away from this that each and every one of us we are whole human beings right we aren't defined by what we do and you are a whole human being and I am a whole human being um, and I am a wear my heart on my sleeve kind of girl if you know me if you've worked with me you will know that and I wouldn't be any different on this Facebook live um, because that's just not who I am so who am I well my name is Kristen Edmiston I'm 42 um, don't tell anybody <laughs> um, I am a very blessed mama of a 16 year old boy I am among other roles I'm a very loving wife I am a sister I am an auntie I am a friend um, and between us I'm kind of a closet cat lady haha <laughs> If I had it my way, I'd have 12 cats, but right now I only have two, and my husband's in the background right now, just shaking his head like, no, no, no more cats. But a girl can try, right? Um, so I'm no stranger to adversity, just like you. Um, and, and guys, I forgot to mention this. Um, I would love to hear your questions as we go. I've got a couple of people moderating the comment section. Yeah, I can only have two. I see that, David. Thank you. Um, so I've got a couple of people watching for comments and questions and um, so they're gonna flag for me if something comes up please don't be shy I, I, if this could be a conversation I would be over the moon um, so yeah like please comment please give me the thumbs up if something resonates or you know a, a heart if you really like it because that interaction is, is just huge for me so um, anyways back to adversity so I'm no stranger to it just like you I'm I'm not the only one but here's kind of what my story looks like in a nutshell so I left home when I was 16 and I worked full-time while completing high school and that was just so I could support myself uh, and at that time in my teens I was enduring an emotionally and physically abusive relationship and that went on for about four years um, I worked my butt off for you know uh, four years with two part-time jobs when I was going to nursing school uh, and getting my undergraduate uh, degree and um, fast forward several years later in a one-year period this was brutal I went through a separation a divorce and the very sudden loss of my mom and she was only 59 and it was a complete shock and rocked my world and I'm still reeling from it and I think one of the worst parts about all that is that my son was too young when she passed away and he doesn't have any memory of her right and and that sticks with me and it always will so um, a few years later I completed my master's degree uh, my MBA while working full-time um, and I was an executive in the healthcare system at that time so like my my world was just madness and I think this is when I realized just how little sleep I needed to survive um, so it, it was tricky but I did it right I'm here to tell you about it today um, at the age of 35 um, I made the very difficult decision to leave my safe and my comfortable career path and I started all over again scariest decision I ever made right I gave up the salary the pension the title the known future I gave it all up and I took the leap and that was pretty terrifying too uh, I dared to start my own business actually two uh, without having any prior experience with entrepreneurship yep I was armed with um, my nursing degree and an MBA and 
some really, you know, sprinkled experience in my executive role, but that's all I had. And, you know, in hindsight, I'm thinking to myself, whoa, that was, uh, you know, either really courageous or absolutely insane. But either way, still here to tell the tale. Um, and this is where it started to get really hard. So four months after I quit my job and I took that huge leap of faith, we got the news that my dad was diagnosed with a grade four glioblastoma. And if you don't know what that is, if I say the name Gord Downey um, of the tragically hip, that might kind of resonate with you, right? So this in short is a terminal brain tumor. And it was just four months after I left my job that the reality of A, I'm gonna lose my dad and B, um, my family and I were going to become his primary caregivers, it, it really sunk in. And that's when I truly learned what the role of being a daughter meant to me. And my family and I, we rallied to care for him on his terminal journey. And, but I have to say, you know, watching him deteriorate and then ultimately lose him was by far the greatest adversity I've ever known. Absolutely bar none. So here we are. Um, today, enter COVID-19, and our world has been turned upside down, right? It is yet again another piece of adversity that we're all facing. So what do I do? This brings me to an actual formal introduction about who Kristen Edmiston is. Now that I've kind of thrown out my life story and Cole's Notes version out there, um, this is what I do. This is what I do for a living now. Um, I'm an entrepreneur and I'm the owner of a company called Kia Consulting Incorporated and I started it about eight years ago and I work with all kinds of clients from the for-profit sector, not-for-profit sector, um, charities, soup to nuts. I do a lot of individual coaching with people that want to start up their own businesses um, and my days are filled with amazing things like strategizing teaching, speaking, kind of like this, problem solving, planning, um, and my favorite part, dreaming with my clients about what could be. So doesn't that sound way more interesting than introducing myself as I'm a business consultant, right? Um, to be honest, usually when I start that way in a conversation, I get a bit of a, a roll of the eyes, right? So um, there's a lot more to me than just being a business consultant and what I do on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, so something else about me is I am the co-founder of a project called The Circle of Angels. So if you've heard of The Circle, please give me a like, give me a thumbs up or a heart or something. If you've heard of The Circle of Angels or if you've ever received one of our little angels, let me know because that's going to tell me kind of, you know, a sense of who might be joining me right now because I can't see you all. So um, yeah, give me, give me the thumbs up, guys. I like that, that's helpful. So if you haven't heard about the Circle of Angels, we're gonna talk, I'm gonna talk about that in a little bit. Um, but it's a huge part of me, and for me personally, I think that's the best example I have of what a resiliency bounce is. And I'm gonna tell you the story behind it here too. Um, so before all of that, you know, clearly I was a registered nurse. That's where my career path sort of began and um, my specialty was pediatric critical care. I can tell you it was by far the best job and the worst job, all wrapped up into one, and I think you can imagine why. Um, and uh, I, I also, my career sort of transitioned into the more executive side of things over the years, but I left the system in 2013. I've been doing my own thing ever since, and uh, I love it, I love it. Um, and you know, before I go on, I just wanna say, I have such tremendous respect and gratitude right now for everyone at the front line. I remember what it was like when SARS hit. I was at the front line. I was pregnant and at the front line when SARS hit. And I remember when H1N hit and I was, you know, in a suit and heels and I was giving vaccinations to frontline care workers in the foyer of the U of A hospital. I remember those days. They'll never, they'll never leave me, and I can't imagine for a second what this is like right now for our healthcare providers, but my heart is with you, and um, I'm just, there's no words to express my gratitude for what you're doing right now. So thumbs up if you agree there, and uh, if you want to send some love to some doctors and nurses out there. Okay, so 
I totally just shared a whole lot about myself. That was the vulnerable side of it. And in there, I'm hoping you're going to find something that's relatable because it's the best I can do in a Facebook Live to try and make a connection with you so that you really buy into what I'm saying here is by trying to make a connection. So hopefully there's something in there that I've said that you can relate to. Um, again, give me a thumbs up. Give me a thumbs up if you can relate to anything I've said. Maybe you've done the single mom thing. Um, you know, maybe you've, you've gone to school and worked full time at the same time. Maybe you've lost a loved one very suddenly. Um, maybe you know the struggles of and the joys of raising a teenager these days, right? So there's got to be something in there that I shared about my personal life and who I am that we could relate on. You and I, we could have a conversation about it, right? And that's, that's the magic right now. Um, it doesn't matter what my title is. Uh, what matters is that I can make a human connection with each and every one of you. This is important. This whole concept that we are whole human beings and we are more than what we do is critical. And it's critical to this concept around resiliency because we are multidimensional, we are multifaceted, and that is what makes us resilient. That's the secret sauce. So what is resiliency? What, do I, what am I really talking about? You know, give me some context, Kristen, right? Okay, well, I've got two definitions that I've literally just pinched off the internet. Um, and they fit. It's just perfect for what I'm trying to explain here. So resiliency is defined as, and I'm reading here, um, the capacity to recover quickly from difficulties or our toughness, right? And also our ability um, or the ability of a substance or object to spring back into shape or the elasticity, okay? So we're talking about toughness and elasticity, that ability to bounce back. So when I talk about resiliency, that's what I'm getting at, okay? Why does resiliency matter in all of this? Because we've all got it within us. This isn't something you have to go and procure or buy or learn about or take a course on. You've gone through adversity, no question, we all have. So you have resilience with, resiliency within you. And all I wanna do today is talk about how to tap into that so you can leverage the bounce that's coming. I promise it's coming, okay? Um, we've all survived adversity before. We know how to do this. We got this, I promise. So two analogies. I'm gonna, I've actually got props. Um, first of all, rubber band, right? Always helps to have a visual. It really does. In fact, I don't think it would be too unreasonable for you to go around your house, look for a rubber band later today, and a bouncy ball. Do you remember these bouncy balls? They were like in the 25 cent machines in Safeway, right? They were the best as a kid, right? Mind you, I remember my older siblings maybe pinging me with one or two of these as a kid too. I won't mention names. <clears throat> um, anyway, so rubber band. When we're talking about elasticity and we're talking about resiliency, when we're stretched, right? When we're stretched through adversity, what happens? What happens to this rubber band is I'm pulling it back and I'm ready to fire it off. What happens, right? I'm building potential energy, right? So when I let this go, the harder I'm stretching, the further it's gonna go, right? Well, that's what's happening to us right now. We are being stretched. And so we have to be really careful to not allow ourselves to be pulled so hard that the band breaks. But we also have to clue into the fact here that, oh, I'm gonna generate some power from this. Oh, where am I gonna direct it, right? What will serve me? Um, so, elastic band, you are an elastic band. Now the bouncy ball. So I'm not gonna do this because if I do, I'm gonna break something in my house and it won't be good. But what happens when I drop this ball, right? What's gonna happen when it hits my countertop here? It's gonna bounce, isn't it, right? Well, what happens if I increase the force of it going down? If I actually kind of give it a little bit of a shove? What's going to happen? Do it, Teresa. I love you. Yes, I should do it. <laughs> I'll probably ping myself in the head, right? It's going to bounce. Of course it's going to bounce. And the more force I put into it, the higher it's going to bounce out, right? Okay, so what happens if I drop it and I let it bounce, but I don't pick it up? You know, I just kind of let it drop and just let it kind of dribble along right? Eventually it's going to like stutter itself to death and just stop and then my bouncy ball is not going to go anywhere, 
right? That's us right now. So we have this potential. We know we're gonna, we're gonna have to bounce from this. So we can feed our souls and direct our positive energy in a way that's gonna give this ball a bit of a force so that when it does bounce, it's gonna go higher or it's at least gonna go to where we were, right? Or it's gonna go maybe some other direction, but we're gonna be able to anticipate that and do something with it, okay? So it's, it's about bouncy ball and elastic bands. How's that for simple, right? It's the best I can do when I don't have other props. Okay, so I want you to walk away with that visual, carry it with you today and ask yourself, what force can I add to my ball to generate a bigger bounce? What can you do? And I'm gonna give you a tool a little bit later that'll hopefully help you answer that question. Um, to start with, it's your resiliency. That is the force and may the force be with you. Okay, uh, something else to note is your resiliency is different. Your resiliency is different than mine because your experiences are different than mine. And how I've interpreted and processed my experiences, that's gonna be different than, than how you've gone about yours too. And that's okay. In fact, that's an absolute gift because when we connect and we talk about what we've gone through and what's worked or you know what's helped us or maybe what really didn't, we can learn from each other, right? Do you see that wealth of knowledge that we have? That's why we're stronger together in this right? One reason anyway. So your resiliency is critically important and can help me build mine too. So share yours, tell your story, share what happened in your life. And you're going to be helping a lot of other people along the way. Um, you know, and the other thing is, I mean, I am a glass half full kind of girl. If you know me, then yeah, okay, I am. You might've picked that up already, but you know, I just can't fathom that we go through tough stuff like this right now for no reason. Like, I'm just not okay with that. Uh, in fact, one of my favorite phrases is, I didn't come this far to only come this far. You know what? Like, think about the muddy, garbagey, difficult times you've gone through. You know, that wasn't just so you had to go through adversity. There had to be something in there, right? So let's draw upon that and try to apply those learnings into what we're going through right now. Now, whether that's a small business that you're about to start or a small business that you've been running for a while, or maybe a medium sized business, or maybe you're a business that, you know, before all this COVID-19 happened, you went all in and you, you know, you rented a new bay or a new, uh, took a lease out on a new space. And now you're thinking, uh Oh, now what? Right? So, this is for all of you. This is all for all of you who are, are, are maybe wondering about your job security or you know, your loved one's health. Like it applies to all of us, but know that I come as a, like a business coach now or a business consultant now. So that's kind of the origin of where I think some of these suggestions might really help. So remember that I didn't come this far to only come this far. Don't give up. If you could put your hands up right now, I bet you every single person on this Facebook Live would say, yep, if I said, have you thought about this is hopeless? I, there's no way out. I, I just can't see a light in this. I'm, I'm, su I'm stuck, right? Give me a thumbs up or something. If, if, if you've had that thought cross your mind at least once, like, ah, uh, I can't see my way through this, right? You're not alone. I promise you, you are not alone. I have that thought on a regular basis myself and I have to keep pulling myself in, but don't give up. There's a bounce coming your way. This resiliency bounce is coming and you gotta be ready for it. Okay, so this concept around resiliency, I'm gonna go through my personal story to really try and elicit my points here. And it doesn't have anything to do with business, but it has, been, um, it's my story in terms of the hardest thing I've ever gone through. Some of you know this story. Some of you lived it with me. <laughs> uh, so you'll really be able to relate. Um, and, and that story is the one of my dad and working through his terminal illness and, and finding out what my place in all of that was. So are you familiar with the stages of grief? Have you ever heard that phrase before? 
Uh, if you've ever taken a psychology course or you know, on a wellness or self-improvement course or any grief counseling, anything like that, you've probably heard of the stages of grief. And it's actually called the Kubler-Ross grief cycle. And Kubler and Ross are, are really the, the thought leaders behind this whole, this whole curve. And so there's several steps in this process. Um, shock, denial, bargaining, depression, and acceptance. Okay, so five stages in this cycle. So keep that in mind. So shock, you know, my experience in going through this tremendous adversity, when we heard that my dad had a terminal brain tumor, right? Like huge shock. He was actually in England visiting friends. He was on a pleasure trip in England when we got the call. And it just pulled the rug out right from underneath us. And I, re I distinctly remember the phone call with my sister about, okay, like, are we getting plane tickets? Are we going? Like, what are we doing here? And we were scrambling for some sense of control, right? When you're in that, that shock phase of receiving some bad news, or in the case of COVID-19, of they're shutting down everything. And this is a pandemic, right? There's a shock there, right? Um, how do you manage that? Well, as human beings, we have some patterns that we go to. Very often we'll retreat, right? So out of fear, we may, or just needing time to process, we'll retreat and go inwards, or sometimes we'll take charge, right? And so that was me. I went to my safe place of, I'm a nurse. I got this, I know I can do this, right? I've got the skills, I've got the, I know what to expect. I know how to talk about these things. Uh, I can show the compassion and the empathy. I got this, I can do it, right? And that's where I went in this shock stage. Um, and something that I'm seeing now with COVID-19 is people in this have been going through this shock phase and they're clamping down, right? And they're at Costco and filling up two carts worth of stuff, taking control. They're digging in and they're just doing whatever they know how to, to manage this, right? Um, people are maybe aren't spending money right now. And as a small business owner, that's like our greatest fear is what are we going to do to pay our bills? Because, um, people aren't buying stuff. Uh, just don't rock the boat, right? Play it safe. Let's just see how this plays out. That's how we cope in shock, right? So then denial is the next phase. And I totally went through this with my dad's journey. And there was a part of me that actually really wanted to believe that maybe that biopsy result was going to be negative. And maybe it really wasn't a grade four glioblastoma. And then there was also a part of me that thought, maybe he's going to be the first one to beat those odds. Maybe, right? Um, I didn't want any of it. And I, I searched for any possible way out of this impending loss and the struggle that I knew was coming, the responsibility I knew I was going to have around it. I was like clawing for a way out and denial was, you know, certainly a coping mechanism. It was all so heavy. The adversity was just heavy and I wanted out from underneath it. And you know, have you, have you felt like that with COVID-19, right? It's just all so heavy. What do you mean my kids can't go to school right now? What do you mean that responsibility is on me? Um, how am I supposed to keep my small business running when I don't have customers and I'm, I'm still having to care for my kids and their success in education right now is on my shoulders. That's huge, that's heavy, right? Denial is, you know, maybe your denial looks like a bottle of wine every night. I don't know, no judgment, but right? Like denial is definitely a coping mechanism. And, you know, in my circumstance, in my greatest time of adversity, I felt helpless. I felt stuck. I felt hopeless. And I just couldn't see how any of this was going to work out. My dad was dying and I loved him more than I have words for. So that impending loss and then knowing what that journey was going to look like, yeah, like it, uh, I just wanted away from it. But this little journey that we go through in the grief cycle, sorry guys, I cry at everything. Um, this is a big one though. So the next step was anger and boy, did I get angry. I got mad. You bet I did. Um, and maybe some of you are here right now, like maybe you're right pissed off at everything that COVID-19 is doing to your life and your plans, right? How many people had to cancel trips? Hands up, you know, give me a like if you had to cancel trips because of this. Um, if maybe there was a special event you were looking forward to, a wedding or um, um, I was talking to uh, 
my son's friend the other day and, and she was looking forward to their year long like uh, play that they were doing, canceled. Grade 12's this year, they're grad. What's that gonna look like, right? People are mad and you have a right to be and it's very normal, I wanna normalize that. That's part of the process. Um, in my circumstance with my dad, I got really mad and I'm like, well, why him? You know, and, and then the question around, why me? And it's very selfish. I felt like I went to a very selfish place, but you know, the reality is I, I had just left my career, was trying to start something brand new, was terrified, had no reassurances that it was gonna work out, and I honestly didn't have a plan B. And, and now I was faced with this extra dose of adversity, right? Uh, so yeah, I went through that angry phase, for sure. Next was bargaining. Um, and this is where you kind of start like bartering back and forth. And you're like, okay, well, you know, I have to accept that this is the way it's gonna go. I have to accept that my kids are stuck at home with me now and I have to take on this responsibility. But maybe there's some kind of compromise. Like I gotta, I gotta work with this, right? Um, with my dad, it was like, okay, maybe I can't save him and maybe he's not gonna be the first person to beat the odds around a, a GBM. Um, but, um, Maybe I could help him have the best journey out. And maybe I could help him have the most comfortable death possible. And so this negotiation, this bargaining around the circumstances was a very real process that I went through. Um, fate doesn't always play fair. And as much as I tried to make a deal, um, maybe the other side didn't live up to their, to their commitment. And I didn't get to control how it all went. But that's where I really dug in deep and found my resiliency, right? So, you know, I think pull that back to COVID-19, we are gonna be bargaining here. We're gonna be like, okay, if I do this, can I do that? Maybe it's in your decision to go to the grocery store, right? Okay, so I know I'm not supposed to go out, but if I go first thing in the morning, then, you know, maybe I'll be around fewer people and I'll be in and out real quick, right? Have you ever caught yourself like bargaining and like saying, okay, well, I know I can't, but what can I do? totally normal part of the process. Um, next phase is depression. And that's really not something to look forward to now, is it? But it is part of the process and it gets you to the end. Um, and you know, I'll be very honest with you here. If you've ever been there with a loved one who is dying, then you'll know. Um, there were a lot of dark and lonely corners in that journey and on that path. You know, I had to be strong for him. I had to be strong for my siblings who were losing their dad too. I had to be strong for my son who was losing his grandpa, whom he loved to the moon and back. And there just wasn't a whole lot of strong left for me. And uh, yeah, like, you know, I wouldn't say like full blown clinical depression, but this depressed emotional state is a huge reality when we're going through adversity. So, you know, it, again, to normalize it. Um, the next phase is acceptance. And that I, you know, I don't want to, to be so Pollyannish to say that everything's rosy and, and everything works out in the end. But there is some peace at the end of adversity when you finally have accepted it. And for my experience with my dad, it didn't happen in a specific moment. It was more like a gradual process. Um, I didn't want to give in, but when I finally let go and accepted what was happening, I did find that peace. Um, I realized, you know, I wasn't the first person to go through this and I definitely won't be the last. And, and that made me feel normal. You know, I wasn't, I wasn't alone. And that's important, right? That's why we need to tell our stories. That's why we need to talk about what we're going through. So something else happened in, in that entire process for me. And I think this is what um, kind of helped me discover what this ball's potential really was with the bounce. And something I realized was gratitude. And long story short, um, you know, my dad asked us to, to just make a handful of these little crystal angel charms to give away to his friends and family and his caregivers just to say thank you. You know, he was in hospice and had just a few weeks left to live and it was just a little something that we could do to try and say thank you and express that gratitude. And that's when I really discovered my bounce. And, um, to get the full story, there is a brand new video that our friends Des and Mike have done for us. Maybe we can flip up the uh, YouTube link so you guys can take a look at it. Um, they did an incredible job and it tells the story kind of start to beginning, or sorry, start to end. But um, 
if you watch that, I think you'll, you'll get what I'm talking about here. Um, and so I can see now that that was my bounce. And through that tremendous adversity and through the gratitude that we were feeling, we started this project called A Circle of Angels. And it was all in Dad's memory. And if you haven't seen the angels, here's one right now. I brought more props. That's one of our angels. Here's another one. Again, give me a like, guys, or a thumbs up if you've ever received one. Or if you've ever made one, right? We, we have people, lots of people help us make them now, too. Anyways, that was five years ago, you guys, and we have now made and sold or given away well over 20,000 charms. That's a lot. <laughs> That's a lot of charms. It's a lot of crystal. It's a lot of sore hands, but it's a lot of love that went out, and it's all been part of my bounce. Um, and with that, we've also raised over $11,000 and donated that to different charities. So um, I can see now, in hindsight, it's 2020, that that was my resiliency bounce in this particular example. Okay, so like enough about me. What about you? Um, think back to your story. Um, what previous experiences with adversity have you had? Have you had? And I know you've had them. Um, um, hi, Natalie. Thank you for your comment. Um, very happy to share. Thanks for sticking with me. It's kind of a long story. Um, think about your own stories and what adversity you've faced. I know you've had them. This is COVID-19 nonsense. It's not the first time. It's not your first rodeo. It's not my first rodeo. Think back to those stories. And when the crisis hit, what happened? What did you do? Did you clamp down? Did you go to your safe space? Um, what do you see happening now? Like what's happening around you? Um, you know, maybe reaching out for, for control, but feeling that frustration and feeling stuck. Like, does that sound familiar? You've done this before, right? Let's tap into that. Did it last forever? No. Um, you know, my story with my dad, his loss will be with me forever after. But the journey leading up to that loss, it did come to an end. And there were some very beautiful things that came from that experience. And oh my gosh, some incredible relationships that I have found through it all that I never would have had had I not gone through that adversity. Um, so yeah, think about that. Think about those phases of the, you know, the stages of grief. And um, can you see how you went through those stages yourself? Because that's important. I'm going to be asking you to reflect on that in a minute. Um, Natalie, I see just reading your comment here. I lo you lost your father to terminal illness as well. Yeah. Um, I'm so sorry for your loss. Like, you know it. Um, so many people know it. You are not alone. I wasn't alone. But now let's turn that around and see how we can apply that learning and that resiliency to try and help other people. Um, okay, so adversity, you've made it through it before. Why would this time be any different? It's a virus. We can do this, right? We are resilient and we have been leveraging our own resiliency bounces in our own ways. Shouldn't that give us hope? I want to just give you some hope today. I think it's a very powerful emotion. So on that note, a bit of a sidebar about hope and uh, hope and fear. I think hope and fear are two of the most powerful emotions in our human experience. And here's why. There's actually a physiological response that happens. And I'm putting my nurse hat on right now. I'm going to nerd out on you a little bit. But there's a physiological response that happens within us when we experience hope and when we experience fear. And so quick quiz, um, do, you, do you know what hormone, what chemical is released in our brains when we experience fear? Anybody? Adrenaline, right? The fight or flight response, the... Um, you know, we get our back up and, and our heart rate actually increases and our blood pressure increases and our, our pupils actually dilate. And you can't override that. That is a, a chemical response happening in your body in relation to fear. So that is a highly motivating emotion. That's what's going to make you run away from the lion, right? Or that's what's going to make you run into the burning building when you know that your child is in there and needs to be rescued. That's adrenaline. That's fear. 
And so the other powerful emotion is hope. And we just don't give hope enough credit. Um, so the chemical that's released in our systems when we experience hope, not everybody knows this one, but it's called dopamine. And dopamine is released for a lot of different reasons, but it's a real feel-good um, chemical, a real feel-good hormone in our body. And, you know, it's kind of that, oh, everything kind of feels good, or, you know, just that little bit of excitement, or it's, it's just a feel-good emotion, right? So when you're on high levels of hope, you've got that chemical on your side. And it's going gonna, it's gonna to help you make, you make you feel better in, in whatever circumstance you're in. So remember that adrenaline and dopamine, we can't override them, but boy, can we try to leverage them. I'm gonna to get to that in a bit. So um, this tool I was talking about, it's, um, it's a simple mental tool that anybody can use. And the piece of paper I asked you to grab earlier on, you might wanna pull that a little bit closer right now because I want you to write some things down. Um, the recoil tool, it is a simple acronym. So each letter, if you can take your, your piece of paper and kind of make it into a grid of six, so you have six boxes. And I want you to spell out recoil, R-E-C-O-I-L, on your piece of paper. And um, after this Facebook Live, I want you to sit back and, and work on filling it out. Um, but I think it's gonna help figure out what does resiliency mean to you and how can you leverage it to bounce your ball a little bit higher in these tough times. So think about this ball dropping again and that potential energy that we're gonna be able to like, you know, if we can add to the forest to getting this ball to bounce, if we can build up all that good stuff from our own resiliency and maybe quell the fear and increase the hope, this ball is gonna bounce with more force and it's gonna have a higher trajectory going ahead. This is why it matters, okay? Um, so you're really just preparing. You're preparing yourself for the bounce and you're gonna get ready to catch it. Just don't let the ball drop, stutter, and stop. That is not an option here. Got it? <laughs> okay, so with that piece of paper, get your six segments, and we're gonna start with the letter R. So the word recoil, this is the recoil tool. Um, so starting with R, I want you to reflect. Take some time to think about what you've gone through. What's your story? And I want you to think about what adversity you faced in the past. What did you have to just accept? What could you control? What did you have to let go of? Reflect on what strengths you, you, you drew from, because you had some, you survived it, you're still here. What were those strengths? What did you learn? What did you learn about yourself? What did you learn about others? I also want you to reflect on who helped you. Help is, is the next key point I wanna hone in on, but who helped you? Write it down. Okay, I want you to really think about this because what you're doing is you're, you're creating an inventory of things that are going to help, help create a greater bounce for yourself in the future here. So E in the E section, E stands for employ and engage. So I want you to start employing, like figuring out how you're going to use these prior skill sets you've developed, this resiliency that you've built up in the past. How are you going to use it and how are you going to engage other people to help you? So how can you leverage all these strategies that have worked in the past? Now, here's some examples, things that have helped me in all kinds of adversity. Whether it was the story about me losing my dad or career changes or who knows, right? All of the above. Um, sometimes it's as simple as exercise, right? People, people find a lot of joy in exercise or listening to music or in my case, really, really loud music while I'm driving fast in my car. Um, peppermint tea, that's another coping mechanism for me. Or learning, learning something new, reading a book, growing my mind, meditation, networking, right? Getting out there and, and mingling with other people, that could be a coping strategy. What about brainstorming? You know, have you ever been in a problem where you didn't have an obvious answer and you had to like really get yourself out of the box and think about it? So brainstorming, maybe that's helped. Um, getting a coach, getting an advisor, talking to somebody that's you know more of a mentor that's kind of been there before, maybe that's helped you. Or journaling, um, creating something with your hands. Um, long showers, gratitude, forgiveness, empathy. Have any of those things helped you? 
in the past. Well, that's your secret sauce. That's your resiliency. And I want you to write it down because I also want you to tap in and start using and engaging with those strategies now. You know what? COVID-19 has nothing to do with my journey on my, with my dad's terminal illness. Nothing at all, except everything. Because all that resiliency that I built up during that journey is going to serve me now. And those strategies, I'm going to turn to them first, right? Um, so, you know, keep that in mind. And, and the one piece I just I have to hone in on, in part because I'm a guilty party here in full confession, is around asking for help. And we need to stop thinking that asking for help is a sign of weakness or a sign that we aren't competent or we aren't capable and that we need someone else's help to actually be successful. You know, give me a thumbs up if you can relate here. Like, is, is asking for help hard? Um, yeah, it's hard for me. I've been an independent, stubborn female for a very long time. <laughs> um, but here's the thing. Asking for help doesn't just help me. What does it do for other people? Let's just flip this for a minute. How do you feel when someone comes to you and says, hey, I could use some help right now. Can you help me with? How do you feel? Do you feel burdened? Do you feel like someone's taking advantage of you? Do you feel like the other person is, is, is not capable of doing it on their own? Are you sitting there in judgment? No. You're thinking, oh, they value me. Um, you know, they, they, they need me. Oh my gosh, they value me. I can do something, right? Um, yeah, good point, Teresa. I'd rather help others than ask for help myself. Yeah, I'm in that boat all the time. That's one of my coping mechanisms, right? I'm like, I want to help everybody. And yet I really struggle with, um, with asking for help myself. And I'm getting better at it. It's a practice. But now more than ever, you guys, we need to be able to put up our hands and say, I need help. You know, it might be help with, I need help getting groceries to my elderly grandmother. Can somebody please add spaghetti and pasta sauce to their, um, their pickup order? Or, you know what, I need help trying to figure out what I'm going to do with my business right now. I, I just need help. Put up your hand because people need to be needed right now. I need to be needed. You need to be needed. And we've all got our own resiliency bounces that we can apply here to help each other. Ask for help. Don't hesitate. Just do it. I'll help you. Everybody will help you. Um, okay. Back to the tool. So we're on C. C stands for create and be creative. And a part of resiliency is being extremely resourceful. You've got to start um, thinking outside the box here, especially as a small business owner when it's just not business as usual. Like again, hands up if you're in that boat and you've really had to flex and try to figure out new ways of doing things. Like that's totally me right now. Um, and you know the phrase that, you know, cash is king. Well, in this case, creativity is a king. If you can be creative, you're going to get through this a lot easier. Um, so be creative with your ideas. Be bold, be brave, get thinking out of the box uh, and, you know, invest in something new. Don't be afraid. O, o stands for open up and look for opportunities. So look for every twist and turn, right? You know, look at it as if I can't do it this way anymore, but does that now force me to look at another way to do it? That's an opportunity, right? Yes, it's a barrier. Yes, it's a challenge, but like something's trying to direct you in another way. Maybe don't fight it. Maybe be open to it. Maybe explore it. Oh my gosh, what if this is actually going to turn out into something even better than you've ever had before or better than you've imagined, right? Like, what if? It could be. Um, it could be the best zig to your zag that has ever happened. Um, so, you know, it's, it's critically important to just be open and be uh, open-minded to, to new opportunities. Seek them out. They're there for a reason. Don't overlook them simply because it's been... Um, uh, you know, something new to you. Um, getting flagged that there's, there's other comments here. Yes, be creative. Um, coming from a true creative, Teresa, uh, I, you've taught me so, so much in that area. Be creative. Um, Beth, thank you for your kind words. I hope this helps um, in some way. Okay, also be open, so back to the O, be open to asking for help. And don't forget, you're actually doing them a favor by asking for help. 
I is for initiate. So, you know, have you ever had a really great idea and even some, you know, thoughts on how you're going to pull it off, but then generating that activation energy to pull it all there to like pull the trigger, it isn't there and you stop. Yeah, don't do that. <laughs> right? Now is not the time. Pull in all that resiliency and remember, we've got a ball in your hand right now. So all those good ideas, all those good ideas, if you just get it to the top and you don't let go, you're never going to get the bounce, right? So you got to initiate. Um, yeah, yeah it's, it's tricky. It's tricky, right? Um, but we can't afford to wait for things to be perfect. So launch that website. Uh, make that post. Do your first live video. Initiate something. Uh, it all starts with a single domino. Right? Any forward motion starts with one single domino. So just initiate it and see where it goes. And then lastly, the last letter of recoil is L. So launch, let go, and learn. This is where you must need to muster up all that courage that you can. It's in you. You've done this before. You are resilient. Muster up that courage. This is where your bounce is going to happen. Um, you have to let go of that fear that it might not work or I've never done it before, or I don't know what's gonna happen on the other side of this. You gotta let it go. Um, you have to let go of that self-doubt. I know it's in there, it's in all of us, but you gotta let it go, it's not serving you. You gotta let go of those past mistakes. Stop beating yourself up. They weren't mistakes, they were learning opportunities. Um, you have to let go of those things that are outside of your control and, um, and let the bounce happen and learn from it, right? So that's L. So R-E-C-O-I-L. That's it. That's the tool, the recoil tool. It's a bit of self-reflection, but you're going to come up with a long list of things and strategies that you can now do and try to channel going forward in all of this adversity. This is preparing you to create as much potential energy as possible for when this bounce happens. That's the resiliency bounce. Um, just gonna get closing up here. A couple thoughts I wanted to leave you with. Um, did you know that there's actually science around this, around the three common characteristics that people possess, those that who are considered to be the most resilient or more resilient than others? Three characteristics. So just a check-in, like how do you check these boxes? What could you do to maybe increase a little bit of it? Um, number one, they accept reality. And there's a big difference between seeing the reality and accepting it. And I, I learned that in spades with my experience with my dad's journey, right? I saw the reality. I knew he was going to pass away. I knew he was terminally ill, but accepting it was uh, altogether different, right? And some of you know that journey well. The second thing that resilient people possess um, is a very strong connection to values, to their values. So, you know, what are your values? What matters to you? Who do you want to be in this? That's a big question for all of us, right? At the end of the day, when we're looking back, what's the story you want to tell? Who were you in all of this? And um, how did your values play out? And then the third characteristic of really resilient people is that they have this uncanny ability to improvise and pivot. Um, I was on a conference call yesterday and someone said, yeah, pivot's going to be the word of 2020. And boy, is it true, um, right? But that's, that's a huge component of resiliency is that you're able to accept um, you're able to be aligned with your values and you're able to pivot, right? We can do that. I don't know where this ball is going to bounce for you. It may be in the same trajectory that you were on long before COVID-19. Um, I can tell you in my dad's story, when this ball fell and I thought it was just going to end and stop with my dad passing away, it bounced into a project that's been going on for five years now and, and spreads love, light, hope, and kindness all over the world. Never did I see that coming. Right? So who knows where your bounce is going to go. You just got to make sure you build up for it. Dig deep. You can do this. I know you can. So we've covered a lot here and I've probably gone way over what I should have for timing, but uh, that's typical for me. Uh, some things I want you to walk away with. Number one, resiliency is within you. It is. This isn't something new that you've got to just, you know, go out and get. You've got this. This recoil tool that I've shared with you, it's going to help. It's going to help you rediscover it and figure out ways to leverage it and apply it. Second, you will bounce. I promise you that. It's just how you're going to manage that going down part and then the trajectory, how far you're going to go up. So the bounce is coming. Don't give up. Be ready. 
uh, be ready to pivot. Thirdly, you are a whole human being, right? We all are. Um, and you aren't defined by just what you do. So in all of this, if you're sitting back thinking, I'm not going to be able to keep doing what I did before. I maybe have lost my job or I'm going to lose my job or my, my small business it just might not survive this. You aren't defined by what you do. You can reinvent. Um, you are resilient. You can absolutely work through this. Um, so yeah, you're more than what you do. Please remember that. And just four last suggestions. Number one, return to your why. This is your foundation. So, you know, why do you, why did you start your business? Why did you pick your career the way you did? Why, why did you work so hard for your clients and customers? Why? That's your foundation. That's your strong point. Go back, go back there, revisit it. Number two, work through the tool, use it. Um, your resiliency is your place of strength. So if your why is your foundation, then your resiliency is your strength, right? Remember that rubber band, right? Building up strength. Um, number three, ask for help. You're not only doing yourself a favor, you're doing someone else a favor and we all need to be needed right now. And four, look for ways to increase your hope and decrease your fear. And that might be something so simple as just surrounding yourself by the right people right now, right? If you've got the fear kind of being fed in, right? you know, you need to just park that. You need to just find some other place for it right now. And if you've got other people that are in your ear that are like, have hope, have hope. You might've picked up that that's been a key message of mine today. Have hope. You've got this. Yeah. You need more of that. We all do. So be that voice and also try to attract those voices, right? Have hope. So up the, up the hope, decrease the fear wherever you can. And lastly, it's a concept that, uh, that's really helped me in so many, um, adverse situations. And that's this concept of grace and space. Be kind, be patient, and be gentle with yourself and with others. That is what grace and space means. Allow grace for other people and their reactions right now. Um, and give them, give them and yourself the space to just be, you know, what would the world look like if we all trusted that everyone was doing the very best that they could in whatever circumstance they're in? What if we just gave each other that benefit of the doubt? What would it look like, right? Um, so yeah, I think grace and space is going to help us all. And so let's find our bounce and let's help others find their resiliency bounce too. Um, thank you so much for sticking with me on this longer Facebook live. Uh, don't think that's what they're intended to be, but I talk a lot. <laughs> Um, and I want to carry on the conversation for anybody who wants some help working through the recoil tool. So, um, I am offering a bunch of different free zoom conference calls over the next few weeks, just scheduling different dates and times in and different topics. But tonight I'm going to be having a free zoom group call and it's from seven till eight. You can just join in from your phone or from your computer completely free. And I'll be walking through the tool a little bit more and helping people walk through them one-on-one. -on -one. And um, what we'll do is maybe get my email address out there here. And if you want to reach out and sign up for it, then I'll get you all the Zoom conference call details. And I would absolutely love for you to join me. And uh, I would maybe even feel needed and that I might be able to help you. So um, would love to hear from you. And if you want to hear more about some of my other sessions I'm putting out there for free, then follow me on Instagram. And uh, you'll find me uh, as Kia, K-E-A, consulting, all one word, Y-E-G. And uh, anyway, thank you so much. Thanks for all your comments. Um, any questions? I'll just put it out there if there's any quick questions. I know we're almost at a full hour. Give you 15 seconds. And if not, you can always uh, shoot, me, shoot me a message. We'll get you my email address too. Thank you. All feedback welcome. And um, I wish you all the best. You know what? Stay well. Know you've got this. And, um, oh, Kathy, see, that's the kind of stuff that gets me when people say sweet things like that. Kathy, thank you. She says, as always, you're a gift in our lives. Likewise, my friend. Um, that's all guys. Take care of each other and, uh, watch all the Facebook lives. There's so many good ones coming up. Um, and I hope to see you again soon. Bye for now.